Hey, it's Jamie Moore here. You're on the Off The Ball League of Ireland podcast and I'm very happy to welcome a man with possibly the best hairstyle in the greatest league in the world to our podcast, Bastian Harry of Waterford. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Bastian, thanks for having a chat with me. Now, you're wearing a hat today, so you're not actually showing off the great hairstyle. Why not? I always wear a hat. I don't know. I always wear a hat. Unless you're on the football pitch, of course. Yeah, I know. Now, Bastian, you've been around the league for a couple of years. Of course, you played for Limerick before you've played for Waterford. You were in the PFAI team of the year last year. And, you know, you've done interviews across a little bit of time, but I've never really heard the story of how you actually ended up in the League of Ireland and you would have signed for, for Limerick back in 2017. So just for those wondering, how did you end up here in the League of Ireland and your history before that? You played for Paris Saint-Germain's second team, Sheffield Wednesday, Rochdale, Carlisle and Accrington Stanley before you came over here. Yeah, it's been... Uh up and down, you know. After I was in France, I went to England for four years and a half, I think. But I had a good time and hard, hard time in England. And um, I had six months at Accrington where I didn't play at all. And it was really hard for me. So I was really like just to give up football, really. Like my head was totally gone, gone, gone. And uh, I was thinking, I just want to leave England. I, I just wanted to leave England, try something new. And uh, a guy I know, like, just ring me, said, oh, like, Limerick want to have a look at you. They're in first division in Ireland. They just got promoted. And I said, OK, I'll go. And I went over there. I went. I came over here, like, uh, to watch the facilities, have a chat with the manager, see the training ground and everything. And after I said, OK, I'll sign. Like. Yeah, so I'm right in saying Martin Russell was the manager then at Limerick, was it? Yes, exactly, yeah. OK, so you signed for Limerick and at that time Limerick were in the process of, of, of trying to get things back in order and going from the, the first division to the Premier Division as well. What attracted you to them yeah. and when you first got the call to say that someone in the League of Ireland might be interested, you know, you are from France and you played in England so I'm not sure how much you knew about the league. What were your first impressions I, then when you came over? I didn't know nothing about the league to be honest, nothing at all. Uh, my impression, to be fair, I wanted something new, so I didn't really look at all them things. I just wanted to enjoy my football again, get back on track. You know, I was really unfit when I got to Limerick. And uh, I just wanted to enjoy my football again. So I went there, you know, enjoyed. The lads was good with me and everything, you know. And um, I don't know, I just signed and uh, tried to get back fit and get going again, you know. Yeah, I just and, signed, yeah go on, sorry, I just, go on. Like, I just wanted something new, to be honest, like just restart something. Like, Yeah, and when you signed for Limerick, of course, we mentioned Martin Russell and he's been known to play a really good style of football as well. And I'm not sure when you were in the lower leagues in England, if any of the teams played a, you know, a passing brand of football. But certainly when you came to Limerick with Martin, he was a, play he was a manager who played to your strengths as a midfield player who wants to pass the ball and, and, and wants to go and, and get the ball off the back four and play. Oh yeah, to be fair, me as a player, like if my team don't play football, I won't enjoy it at all. So yeah, to be part of this, it was good. You know, I had a, had a really good year over there. You know, uh, I get back playing week in week out, and I really enjoy my my season down there. Yeah. Yeah, so you moved from Limerick and you signed for Waterford at the beginning of of last season, and of course it was the first season for Waterford back in the Premier Division as well under Alan Reynolds, unbelievable crowds and a really good season, in, ending up in the top four and, and making Europe in the end. How did you find your, your first season, you know, at a club that was going to be towards the top end of the Premier League? To be honest, like, I didn't know nothing either about this club before I signed there. But uh, I signed there and when we got starting back, like, you know, we had a great dressing room straight away, like, all the players went well together. I don't know, we, we were feeling it, like, we're going to have something good this season, like... Yeah, and I suppose in the end, you know, the season ended with Europe and a really, really fantastic, you know, campaign overall, but lots of new players as well. I know some players have come up from the first division the previous year as well, but how did the manager and the coaching staff there kind of work the magic to go from the first division, albeit a very good squad and, you know, I'm sure quite a good budget in comparison to teams in the Premier, but to be able to actually be at the top? To be at the top, I think it was more like, uh, you know... <laughs> Bastian, Bastian, my dad is ringing me. Dad, I'm on a podcast. Dave, put me on here for a minute. Like, for some bizarre reason, my iPad rings when my phone rings and my dad's ringing me. Does he not realise you're on my podcast, Bastian? I'm very sorry, so go on. Start that answer okay. again for me, just about, you know, the, the story of uh, getting that squad together so well. Like, yeah, I think the staff and the team, like, a really good connection, you know. 
And I think uh, the manager, the staff look after the player really well and the player give back to the staff, you know. And I think, like, I don't know, like, like I said, like, before, like, like last year was the best dressing room I ever had in football. Like, it was no problem. Like, we, we were all together, the staff and the team all together. Like, there was no, like, something to hide or whatever. It was all together. Yeah, and for you, having never been in the league before, apart from one season, and of course being French and having been a young footballer in, in France, and, and of course sometime in, in the UK as well, how did you find like the culture of an Irish football club and the Irish people in the dressing room and the manager and the people around the club and the fans in comparison to what you had seen before? To be fair, like very friendly people, like you know, like very different to England or even France. Like everyone's like happy. Everyone's like very genuine, like happy to be there, and if they can help, they will help you, and vice versa. Like, and then things moved to this season, Bashana, and you know there was some commentary in the off season about the number of players under contract at Waterford, and I know listening to Alan Reynolds speak, and he said it took him a bit of time to finally put the squad together. Has that shown in 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 the league so far that that maybe you know it, it took a while to get the, the full squad up for pre season, and and things really raring to go this year. I think, yeah, I think that can be part of it. But I think we gained together, you know, we, we picked up some points the last recent game, except last Friday we lost at UCD. But I think, like, we're on, the, we're, we're on the way, like, to get back on it. Like, I think Friday we play Shabba Crawford, it's a big game ahead. But, like, uh, I think we're, we're moving forward. Like, anyway, we only can get better. better. Yeah, you had two really good home wins, of course, as well, over St. Pat's 2 0 and 4 0 against Finn Harps. You also beat Galway in, in the League Cup, too. So, that match last Friday in UCD, a 4 1 defeat, was that a surprise for you guys? And I know last year as well, you lost there in the FAI Cup uh, semi final as well, or in the FAI Cup quarter final, should I say? Uh, it was a surprise, to be fair. Like, I didn't start the game, but I was like so, like, I was like very, like, frustrated, like, because, like, we didn't deserve to lose. 4-1 like but it's football anyway like we have to just get down the sheet and move forward to Friday because a lot of games this month coming up and we have to respond well on the whole month like I think we got like 6-7 game ahead so we can't stay on that game you know yeah and for someone bashing we've spoken about your love of playing passing football what have you made of playing against UCD in the game on Friday and in the league, in the, the FAI Cup game last year, because, you know, for such a young team, they do play a really, really exciting brand of football and a brand of football that your own team hasn't been able to handle in the last two times that you've played them. Yeah, true, uh, you're true. Like, uh, I think they play really good football. I think it's this team, like, if you let them play, that's your danger. Like, you need to try, like, stop them playing from the back and get in their face like and that's what we didn't do the last two times we play against them to be honest yeah and you'll be back up again this weekend bashing in Dublin on Friday playing against Shamrock Rovers who have started the season really well you've played them of course once already th this year what do you make of them and, and the task that you guys face in Tala Stadium on Friday oh, I think we're going to be ready for it you know everyone want to play the, the top of the league everyone want to like how do I, know, I don't know how to say like you know to make like them like lose their head and yeah. lose some points on that day you know like yeah I suppose because their team now at the top of the table everybody wants to beat them and they've done so well so far yeah. so I think that, that might might be the point that you're trying to make to go to Tala to beat them and to really you know make a statement from a Waterford point of view yeah exactly yeah I think uh, everyone want to beat them at the moment you know everyone want to like make them drop points like and Bastian, just on the, I suppose, the process of you now becoming, you know, an experienced League of Ireland player in terms of it now being your third year, how have you found playing against all the different teams that you've played against? And you'll play against Shamrock Rovers this Friday, for example, who are a very different team to, to Finn Harps. And, and I'm sure in, in other the leagues that you've played in, there has been, you know, a, a difference in, in style and, and the similarities between the teams. But now you're probably, you know, from a personal point of view, you know when you're going to Rovers, the players that they have, the style that they play and that sort of stuff, which I'm sure took you a little bit of time to get to know. I think it's just football, you know, Every league got that type of team, you know, some team play football, some team don't. I think you just need to adapt yourself and give your team the best you can do, like, in both ways. Like, if we play football, if we don't, like, you know, it's 
at the end of the day, the game is a fight. Either if you play football or if you're not, like the better team will win the game. Of course, and speaking of, you know, you being in the team bashing as well, you were in the, I suppose, the best 11 players in the league last year, certainly in your position in the PFAI team of the year. How happy were you to, to, to have achieved that? And I know you really enjoyed the awards night last year. I was there myself. And uh, you were very well dressed, sir, in a, in a very nice suit. <laughs> I really enjoy you. You know, like, I think as a player, everyone loved to be in the team of the year, like, of this league, of this league, you know, and I think that was a massive achievement for me. Like, this last year was one of the best seasons, like, the best season I had, like, football wise, you know, I played every game, I scored goals, we got qualified for Europe, you know, so I was so happy, like. And what do you expect now from Europe, Bastian? And I'm sure maybe one of the reasons why you came to Ireland was because. You know the opportunity to play in Europe, and if you look at the, the clubs that you played with in England, of course they'll never play in Europe ever, and, and their players won't either. So to have come to Ireland, Limerick, and then Waterford, and to have done so well last year, looking forward to the Europa League qualifiers later on this summer. Uh, I think you know why I came to Ireland is to try to play European football, and now I got a chance. I'm going to give myself 100 percent to be ready for this because this is really something I look forward to, and I think all the players in the team, you know, like. Every players when you got a European like play like it's massive like. And when you first, you know, signed for Limerick and you came to to the League of Ireland and you say you wanted to play in Europe, how realistic was that ambition in your head then? Given that you kind of knew nothing about what you were coming into. I don't know. Like the guy who ring me said, "Oh, you can go to Ireland first division. Like they play Europe." And when he said they play Europe, I think that's an opportunity. Like. That's something every player will want to do, like is play in Europe, like. And I just went, listen, I need a new start, so I just take, like, I just take the risk and just go for it, you know, like give myself hundred percent and to enjoy my football again, and that's what I'm doing right now, you know. What do you expect from these European games, Bastian? Of course, we don't know who you're going to play yet, but because you're, you're French and you know, I'm sure you, you've kept an eye on, on on different teams around Europe across your career and playing in different places as well. I'm sure you're very excited, but what do you expect and do you think it'll be much of a different style to the League of Ireland games that you've been involved in? I think like we need to focus on us more than anything else. You know, I think the the worst team you can play against is your team because on a day if you're bad, you're gonna have a bad day. So I think you need to focus on us and nothing else really. And on that passion, very finally, speaking of uh, focusing on you, I've been told by a Waterford uh, teammate of yours that you're the best dancer they've ever seen. Tell me more. No, I love dancing, you know, like I've been dancing since I'm young, you know, I love dancing and nothing going to change, you know, always in the dressing room, I'm dancing, you know, play the music, you know, that's me, like. So Monday morning, you're going into training, you're actually in the changing room dancing. Yeah, I put some music, like I dance, I like, you know, like singing, you know. I'm happy to be there, so I'm just enjoying my day, you know. Of course, and I'm sure that has, you know, an impact on the rest of the teammates who, who might be a little bit tired on a Monday morning and you come in and lift their mood. Yeah, I think some some of the players think I'm crazy. Some of them think like, oh, I had enough of this guy, but I don't care, you know, I do what I have to do. And uh, how do your dancing skills compare to maybe some of the, the local League of Ireland lads? Do any of the, of the Irish lads try and give you any sort of a dance-off or are you the, the one and only top dancer in the Waterford dressing room? I think I am. To, I, like, not to be big time, but I think I am, yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. Passionary, thanks a million. The best luck on Friday. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.